Okay, I'd like to tell you about objects falling um, through the air with some air resistance. Okay, so um, if you do have an object that's falling through the air, uh, the earth pulls on it with um, mg of force. And, uh, but as it, as it plows through the air, um, the air pushes upward. Object pushes down on air, air pushes up on, on the object. And um, how much force this is, I'll call it F sub AR for air resistance. And how much force you get from the force of air resistance has to do with, um, let's see, what things. Um, one is um, what, how thick the, the fluid is that it's going through, so the air itself. It also depends on the shape of this object. If it's more streamlined, you'll get less air resistance. Um, and it, it also depends on um, the, how fast this is going. Now, the faster you go, the more particles you interact with per second. So that so the that's why it's velocity dependent. And also, the faster you go, the harder you hit the particles. And so you you do get uh, this air resistance force that depends on um, velocity. Now we're we're going to approximate this force as uh, it's going to be negative b times v. And um, the B is called the drag coefficient. And what goes into that coefficient is um, the fluid that it's falling through and the shape of the object and all those things I just talked about. V is the velocity. And the negative sign is there because the air resistance force will be negative to the in the negative direction, the direction opposite to V. So if V is positive then B is always positive. So if V is positive, then the air resistance force will be negative. If uh, V is negative, then the air resistance force will have a positive, uh, it'll be a positive force. And so um, that's how that works. And the, the way that you can figure out like how the velocity is going to change with time and, and um, acceleration is going to change with time and all that is um, you, you just apply Newton's second law. Before we do that, though, let's just kind of guess which way these graphs are going to go. So let's first, do, um, let's first do the acceleration. You know, when something is falling without air resistance, the acceleration just is a constant 9.8 meters per second squared. But um, what happens is as this grows, you have less and less net force because the net force is the addition of these. And since that one is the opposite way of that, this grows and grows and grows and so this grows until when this is equal to mg, there is no acceleration. And so we might expect a graph like that, a decay graph. Uh, velocity, on the other hand, What we should expect from that is um, if we drop it from rest, so we'll start here at rest, as um, time goes on, it got, does get faster and faster. And, um, you know, you would see something like straight up, if there were no air resistance, it would have a slope of 9.8 meters per second squared. But what happens instead is it starts out with 9.8 meters per second squared a slope. That original slope is 9.8 meters per second squared, but then it uh, gets less and less until the slope, doesn't it have to be zero at, in, at infinity? Okay, this speed that it's approaching is called the terminal velocity speed. And terminal velocity is um, when occurs when these two are equal to one another, so then you stop, you stop uh, accelerating. So to figure out what terminal velocity is, just set the magnitude of that equal to the magnitude of mg. So when BV's magnitude equals mg, that's when you'll, you'll stop accelerating. So I'm not saying you're going to stop. You're going to stop accelerating. You'll stop gaining speed, but you'll still move. Okay, so this terminal velocity then is just mg over b. All right, so um, let me show you some more details of the math. I think this is going to go into a second video because um, the math is a little bit long.
but see if you can follow along with the math then. So let's see how this all works. Okay, so we have, um, if I were to take um, and start out with Newton's second law, A equals F net over M, then um, A is equal to, and it would be equal to MG minus BV all over M. We're calling, let's call down positive. So that's why I'm calling that, a, that's going to be a positive value and then that would be a negative value. Okay, so down is positive. It, you could go the other way, but we'll just, we're going to call down positive. Okay, so um, we're pretty much done with the physics here. This is the physics of, of um, free fall with air resistance, which seems remarkably easy. Uh, there are many more complications that I'm not telling you about, but uh, this is this is what you need to know for a for um, AP physics. But um, what what we'd like to do is we'd like to solve this for v and find out how does v change with time. I'd like to know how that how that works, and I'd also like to know how a changes with time. And I'd also like to know how its displacement, uh, we'll call it x. You might want to call it y because it's in the vertical direction, but we'll just call it x. How does that change with time? Okay, so we'd like to get equations for all those. And so that, that means we're going to have to uh, apply a little bit of math, a little bit of calculus. So let's see how that works. Okay, so I'm going to take that first equation, a equals m, a equals mg minus BV, the two forces, all over M. And then I'm going to, if I want to get V in terms of time, what I'll do is I'm going to say A is dV dt. So, and I'm going to um, rearrange this a little bit. I'll, I'll cancel the M out here. So it's G minus B over MV. So I got that. And then um, maybe I'll bring, I'd like to have the term with the V together with the, the DV and bring the DT on the other side. So DV with, it, I can't just bring this term over, that wouldn't work. Algebraically, I have to bring the whole thing over. All right, so there, there you have it. Okay, so now um, I can get rid of the dV and the dt if I integrate both sides. And um, I'm going to tell it to start at um, t equals 0. These always have to correspond. The parameters at t equals 0. I'm going to say, I'm going to just tell the math that the thing is going at 0. v is equal to 0. And then at, at some other time t... I'd like to know what the V is. All right. So when you take the integral of this side, it's just going to turn into um, T. And when you put in zero in time, it, you just get T. So this, that side just reduces the T. Okay, now this side, on the other hand, um, I'm going to have to use integration by um, substitution. And so um, let me come over here and write this out again. And if you know how to do integration by substitution, you might try solving for that. Um, and I'm going to show you in the next video how that works. Um, but I'll give you a hint here. I'm going to say let u equal to g minus b over m b. See, then I can substitute in for u. That's a lot easier of an integral to solve. But I can't do dv over u. I'd like this to be du. And so the trick is you can get how du and dv are related by taking the derivative of u with respect. If you take the derivative of u with respect to v, that's how you can find the relationship. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.